if you don't know Phil Hartman by name, you're likely to know his voice from somewhere. Especially if you're a 90s kid, in which case his IMDB page may cause a nostalgia overdose. For Simpson fans, he's Troy McClure from the show's instructional video gags and the awful but affordable lawyer Lionel Hutz. He was also featured in shows like Ren and Stimpy, Animaniacs, The Smurfs, Captain Planet and the short-lived cartoon The Critic. But that's just some of his voiceover work. He was also a cast member of Saturday Night Live from 1986 to 1994, co-created Pee Wee Herman with Paul Rubens and had roles in cult classics like Conehead and Small Soldiers. The latter would, in fact, be his last role in a major film and is dedicated to his memory. By that time in his career, Phil and his wife, Bryn's marriage of 10 years had transformed into an incredibly toxic, abusive relationship. By all accounts, Bryn was a jealous person. She'd get upset at Phil for the fan mail he would get from women and once threatened Phil's ex-wife after she called to congratulate them on their newborn baby. She'd throw tantrums and fling objects across the room, seeking attention by losing her temper. Or she'd seek to humiliate Phil, once aggressively flirting with and kissing the men on the SNL cast and writing crew in front of him. She was triggered by her husband's success in the business she was struggling in and feared that Phil had been cheating on her behind her back, even though he was faithful. But from her perspective, Phil seemed increasingly distant. The two would only have sex maybe twice a year if she initiated it. And when the couple tried marriage counselling, Phil would sometimes fail to even show up. Phil also had a fondness for marijuana, which would often leave him out of it much of the time, leaving her feeling neglected. But Bryn also had a serious history with drugs and alcohol, for which she had gone to rehab on a few occasions. Her last visit was due to Phil's insisting she go. After she arrived home, wasted on Mother's Day. The couple were hopeful that she'd be able to get her life back together, but she left when she missed her children too much and relapsed soon after. She was then prescribed Zoloft, which made her even more unpredictable, as she is said to have been occasionally mixing it with alcohol. She became more and more hostile towards Phil who threatened to take the children and leave if she didn't seek help again. When she obliged, it seemed as if there was a temporary peace in the Hartman home. Bryn was planning on going to the high-end rehab centre Promises in Malibu, and the two were enjoying Phil's time off from the show News Radio. On March the 27th, Phil went off to do some boat shopping, while Bryn made plans for the two to enjoy a nice spa day the following Monday. That evening, Bryn went out for a few drinks with her friend, writer and producer Christine Zander, met up at a local Buca di Beppo restaurant, and Bryn vented about her misfortune in the entertainment business over a couple of Cosmos and a half a beer. Recalling her behaviour at the time, Xander said that Bryn seemed in a good frame of mind. After their meet-up, Bryn 
headed over to her friend Ron Douglas's house. Arriving there at about 10.15pm, she again had a few drinks and began expressing just how upset she was with the situation at home. She felt Phil was so absent and that he paid more attention to his friends than he ever did her. She said it made her feel like dirt. After three beers, she decided to head home at around 12.45am. At this point, Douglas noticed that she did not seem particularly drunk. When she got home, she and Phil got into another heated argument. Again, Phil threatened that if Bryn started using drugs again, they could not stay together, even if it meant breaking the family apart. No one knows exactly how long they fought for, or what the resolution was. But we do know that Phil went to bed first that night. And at 3am that morning, Bryn hovered over her sleeping husband with his .38 calibre handgun in her hands. At a mere 18 inches away, in the same house in which their kids were sleeping, Bryn shot Phil twice in the head and once in the torso, killing him instantly. She then left and returned to her friend Ron's. When she arrived, he noted that her appearance was now dishevelled and she was very clearly drunk. She confessed to the killings right away, but Douglas didn't believe her at first. They returned in separate cars, and she led Douglas to see the body for himself. He then called 911 at 6.20am. At that point, Bryn locked herself inside of the room with Phil's body. She called her sister in Wisconsin, told her what had happened and said to tell the children I love them. And with that, she crawled into bed beside Phil, placed the .38 caliber pistol in her mouth and took her own life. A toxicology later revealed that Bryn was under the influence of alcohol, cocaine and antidepressants at the time of her death. They were survived by their two children, Sean and Bujan. At their funeral, Hartman's younger brother addressed the crowd, saying that both Phil and Bryn were victims of the same accident, and that there were no room for blame or hate in this situation. But some of the couple's family and friends disagree. Comedians John Lovitz and Andy Dick have an interesting feud over Hartman's death which has reportedly ended in foul words and violence on some occasions. And just one year later, in 1999, Bryn's brother, Gregory, sued Pfizer, the maker of Zoloft, for wrongful death on behalf of the Hartman children and their parents' estate. Pfizer settled. 